the matlab fundamentals let's move further the next topic of uh, discussion is uh, the representation of date and time in matlab okay so this is about dates and times so now uh, in order to create a uh, specific date and time array in matlab i want to create let's say see uh, there are several data types that are supported in matlab like uh, integers floating double value single value uh, single precision double precision and uh, characters strings these are what we were considering so far in detail so the next type of data set is the date and time data set it's completely different because you have to use several uh, formats like maybe the year coming first then uh, two more digits corresponding to the uh, month right then two more digits corresponding to year or you may you may change according to your need right so you may need date uh, date coming first then month so you see a variety of representations are supported again some uh, users ex expect dash in between the dates and numbers dates months and years some expect a colon or uh, maybe right any other format right so preference is different that's why the date and time uh, is completely kept as a different data type in matlab okay it's not a same uh, right like it's not included in numbers or it's not included in the what you call the string characters right so it's not a text as well so it's completely different one so there is a specific uh, uh, way to create the dates and times okay in matlab all right so first we'll uh, look at the creation of uh, the date and time array right here we are talk we are looking at a specific range of dates i want to create an array of uh, data type uh, which is uh, date and time it has to be an array of right dates and times uh, so one option here is you can create an array of different dates keeping all other uh, variables as constant you can do that right you can keep uh, you can keep fixed amount of uh, what you call the hours hours could be fixed but date keeps on changing otherwise you can do the another way right you can simply change the time on a single date that's also could be an another way right so let's see how to create that we'll go to the matlab window and uh, then we'll uh, see this so let us create the time say t is equal to i will call d a t e t i m e already we have used this right uh, in two different uh, examples previously so what i can do now is uh, say i want to create uh, uh, first i'll enter the year possible right so year is uh, say 2022 okay then sorry i just use a comma so next what i enter is a month right so say month is uh, 02 fine then i enter the uh, date say maybe today's date that is 07 followed by let us say i want to uh, change only the uh, what you call uh, the hours right i just want to change hours so maybe this is from 6 am 6 to 7 okay so 6 to 7 <coughs> so make a note here it's first is year followed by the month followed by the date then the hours then followed by you can write the this is minutes and seconds so date time is the function which defines the data type date time so just see here it's a 1 into 2 data time date time array so 7th february 2022 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock so you created an array of this so you now you can actually change this so i can make it a different value so 6 o'clock till 11 o'clock i'm expecting you see so 6 7 8 9 10 11 so six different elements have been created in that array right it's a date and time now you can see the details of this <coughs> sorry who's t so it's anyway it's an array 
So you can see the bytes allocated are 48, as there are six different, uh, what you call, allocations. Now, anyway, we know that uh, if I try to enter now, right, you know that it actually prints the current time and date. So now it is 10.15 in the morning, 31 seconds, 7th February 2022. Okay, so now is a keyword used to detect the current date and time, right? It reads your system's date and time and it will print over there, okay? So this is the representation. Now, uh, let us say you can uh, try to print this particular uh, date and time in a specific format. All right, let's look at that now. That is, so T is equal to date time I say I want to print now, the current one, but I will specify the format. So what is a format specifier to specify the date and time? You use a keyword called the format with the F capital. Okay, format, comma. So you have to specify the format in the following, uh, again. so I just set it as a link. Okay, so now format. So I will say I want Y, 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 Y for years, okay? Then you have to say MM for months. Then I want DD for days. So you see the dash in the coming in the middle. <coughs> so when this comes in the dash format, I will see the dash coming up even when it prints out, okay? This is for the date, comma. I will specify I want time in a specific format. So previously you see, it is a default format. 10 colon 15 colon 31 but I will change this now you see I want to specify <coughs> using a capital T as the what do you call the, the specifier for time right it indicates that okay you will get this uh, oh sorry there is no no comma in the middle my mistake so just see that after this after the format then I write a comma then I Keep typing everything, right? Without uh, comma. So this is, say I want hours, then minutes, then uh, seconds. All right, I'll close this. Now you see it prints the, this is the date. Then I told I you print a time T, time as T, just a uh, character over there. Then it's 10, 18, Seven. Right, so even if you can, you want to say that it's you can do to print something more before this. Okay, like format, then you can say D, then uh, date like 2012, 2022, 0207, etc. You can change this format as well. Okay, so this is how you print the date and time. You can create an array if you want, or even you can. Create a specific uh, time in a range, date in a range, and you can uh, even print that. So, uh, the point to note here is, uh, in order to use this, use a function called date time. So, various formats are there, and you can use it. Now, sometimes, uh, whenever you write uh, or whenever you run a code, right, we require a Timestamp. So this is the next concept in that. This is something like at whatever time you run something or you, you do some job, you want to save the timestamp. At okay, this is done at this time of the day of this particular day of this month, this year. Right? I want to put a timestamp. So how to do that? So let's look at the timestamp. Simply convert the uh, what you call time into the characters first but the date time whatever we have created right we can convert that into the characters first then you write it as a file okay so we use two things now so first objective is to convert the date and 
time two characters first then Okay, so now let's look at the same thing in Maya. So what I do anyway, I think I have uh, I uh, use a screen here, so then I have the time with me. So t is equal to this. <coughs> so what I want to do here is uh, first you convert this into the string. So because it is in the date time format, if you see t is actually a date time variable right you can see here this is a date time variable but i don't want in the date time i want this to be uh, in which format in a string format so i'll can str string is equal to this is characters of c h a r of uh, i think i call the variable as t so yeah you see now this is now compare this with the str variable Right? It is 1 into 17 characters. Previously, t was 1 into 1 date time. The whole date and time was saved in only single location. Correct? Now you see there are 17 locations allocated for character. You can even see the difference of, in terms of the memory usage. Simply write whose. You see there are two variables. One is the string variable which is character uses 34 bytes. t is a time date time variable which uses 46 bytes. So there's a difference. We converted the date time variable into the character variable, right? Uh, characters array. Now you can use uh, these characters to convert this into a uh, whatever timestamp. Okay, so let me convert this. I, I'll give a variable name as timestamp. Timestamp is equal to just convert this into uh, add a timestamp to this, maybe according to your requirement. So I can add say my underscore my time underscore maybe this is what I want uh, to add at the beginning followed by this str. So you know that you know that this is used to concatenate right. So the if you write inside the square brackets right and you uh, write the characters or character array whichever you want to concatenate over there it gets concatenated so now you see it's actually creating the timestamp in the required format whichever format i specify it actually converts into that okay so time stamp is also very important whenever you uh, do some uh, research work and uh, you simply uh, want to uh, save it in a specific format for a given file right so that's why the time stamps are important then the next uh, concept that we are going to look is a different uh, file structure. We'll move into what is called as the tables, right? How to deal with the tables? Uh, we'll see now. Okay. Most of the time, whenever we are uh, uh, looking at any project, we always use the this one the most that the table format is used most for uh, our uh, various data that we collect for the projects okay so this is very important we'll move on to the next topic which is table all right so our objective is to create a table from workspace variables. Let us assume that there are many variables present in the uh, workspace. Alright, now I want to create a table from that. How to do that? We'll see that first. Okay, this is our first objective. Right? So, So right now, let's say we don't have any huge data available 
to create a table for us right so for that uh, what we can do now is we can load something which is uh, existing in MATLAB all right I'll show you how <coughs> so here CLC I'll just create uh, clear these now what I want to do is uh, in this in in my system I have uh, uh, already loaded a particular data set which we had collected for uh, a particular project related to uh, uh, the patients of uh, some uh, hospitals okay it is already been stored in the dot mat format so we already know that what is a dot mat correct so dot mat format it's already been saved and it's in the MATLAB will recognize that for my machine. So I'll simply call load. So load space patients. So you see on the right side, it actually automatically added, it brought everything into uh, word space. Uh, right? So you can see that uh, this particular data set contains the details of 100 patients right so what are the details you have you have right the age of each of the patient right i'll just open this for this so starting from patient number one till patient number 100 you can see the age of each person each patient then right uh, what is diastolic then what gender what's the height you can see what's the last name which location right in the sense right uh, which hospital they are uh, right now they are admitted to right so what is the health status of each one of them right is he or she is a smoker or not it's a yes no yes no kind one for yes zero for no right etc you can see the complete details what's the uh, what's the height okay etc it's we have all this data with us it was saved in a right a file by the name patients and now I'm simply loading it okay I just loaded that right now I'll see the details how to see the details you know that this is simply WHOS so you see everything came up right so these are the details right what is the class of each of the variable right how many bytes are allocated to them right what is the actual size and uh, the name etc you can see over here all right this is simply loading the uh, variables into the workspace but i have not created a table yet let's see the conversion of that into a table right now right i will, I will my intention is to create a table and populate it with the gender whether he or she is a smoker or not what is the height what is the weight etc all these uh, only these parameters i want okay so in the sense i don't want to use all the variables in my workspace to create a table i choose something and i create so how to do that you see here so what you can do give a name name to the table so tab one maybe okay is equal to the keyword is it, it's itself is a function function name also same table okay table of right tell what you want to create what's the variable name which, which should be present in the workspace so first i want to start with the gender okay i can see you type exactly same as it is as you can see over here so it's see it's gender so simply write the same thing g-e-n-d-e-r in a sense you are specifying what are the column names of your table okay this comma i want to use the smoker status all right and uh, i also want uh, maybe i can use height let's say just just uh, type the exactly which is written in the word space okay h e i g h t and uh, followed by uh, maybe weight i think weight w is capital <coughs> all right okay so this now I, I don't want to print everything on my screen so I put a semicolon otherwise it will print a hundred row table okay let's let me skip that 
okay now you can see here a tab one has been created which is actually a table as per your requirement you see you mentioned that i want a table right from the workspace variable with the following four columns what are the four columns you mentioned gender which is yes first one is genders followed by smoking status smoker height and a weight so you can see everything all the hundred patients details have been converted into this table so this is how you create a table from whatever data you have for example you i'll give another example where you can create a table right let me say i'm i'm doing some experiment and i'm collecting the uh, what you call temperature humidity and uh, water level or something from an experiment for an experiment using some sensors using a hardware whatever data that comes in you store it in say 1000 spaces 1000 variable location later on you can convert that into a table right at a given point of time right you can put a timestamp followed by temperature humidity water level etc like that you see you can do that right like that that's an application now I, let me assume that i just i don't want to see everything i want to see only the first five values of my table so how to see that simply tab1 that's my table name in this table show me only first five rows because i i know that my ta tab one right has hundred rows how many it's again it's a very simple there's nothing complicated here it's just hundred into four matrix right in a hundred into four matrix if i want to read only five what i should do right give the file name right followed by tell me how many rows i want one till five comma all the columns that's all it's the same thing we already have to use that now you see it comes up uh, over the screen like this okay i hope this is straightforward so this is how you display the first five rows you can even choose to display any number of rows that you want okay fine now is there any other method right instead of creating it uh, reading all the variables from a file into the workspace and then creating a table like this right this this for me it looks like it's a it's a huge job when i when i i am doing this repeatedly let me let me uh, give an example i have five or uh, say 100 different files i i did some experiment 100 times okay and every experiment reads date time uh, maybe uh, the temperature humidity water level etc many many variables are there right so doing this 100 times like every 100 times you read these variables to workspace convert a table uh, clear the data once again next file will come you read that it's it's doing this is actually a difficult job right when 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 the data is huge if one or two files are there definitely we can do that okay but see the example i said was 100 times i i repeated the experiment so in such case this becomes actually very difficult all right so what is the solution to avoid can you do it in a single step right so the answer is yes i can do that matlab supports me in this way so i'll just show you one alternative way right before that I, i'll just write uh, what we did so far right so a table uh, uh, when i when i said i want to create a table so first i did was using a function so this is function used is simply table right this is to create the table from the workspace variables all right now I, I i want to do it in a quicker fashion i don't want to load something there is see there is already a file called patients dot bat i know that it is already present in in my system right i can directly read it right and without bringing them into the workspace i can i i want to do the table format directly right so that is what we are going to do now so in the next uh, method directly read the data from file and create
PhD. So for this, so we are going to use a function. That function is read table. R E A D. Read table function. So as the name suggests, this is directly going to read a read the data in the table or tabular format. Okay, now let's go back to MATLAB to see this. How we can do this? Fine. So what I do, I uh, let let the table one be there. All right, and uh, let me do this in a different fashion using tab. Uh, I'll call the name as tab2 is equal to instead of using the table function I use read table <coughs> now instead of right writing the uh, variables name here I'll simply type the file in which my data is present it is actually patients dot format okay I'll simply press enter now it actually creates a tab 2 over here right you can see that there is a tab 2 that is being created but now the difference is that since I have not mentioned what are the variables to be used it uses every variable that is present inside that particular file and creates a table now you see the there will be more number of columns than the tab 1. Tab 1 we specified, okay, use only these four columns, right? Columns names were specified. But in this particular case, tab 2 was created by reading a table format of every data that is present inside that file. So it will use age, right? Everything, every, every character we specified over there. Every data will be used over there inside this. So just see here, <coughs> this is a 100 into 10 table. Right? Why it is 100 into 10 table? Because there are 10 different features we try to represent. So the names, gender, age, location, height, weight, smoker, systolic, diastolic, etc. Self-assessment of the health. So all these parameters have been used to create a table. Now this is the easiest way to do create a table in MATLAB. Straightforward, one command it will create a table. Just specify which is the, uh, where, uh, which is the file that contains your data. Right? Now, once again, I can try to print out uh, first a few uh, rows. I'll say 1 till 10, <coughs> comma, all the columns of this. So, it will print the first 10. Okay, now... Let us see. Uh, what if I want to add something this to table, right? This has been created now. I want to add something to this. Some uh, values I want to add. Maybe I have, uh, after processing this table data, right, at some point during my project, let me assume that I got 100 more values corresponding to each of these patients. Something like a patient ID is created and I want to assign the patient ID to each of these patients. All right, so how to do that, right? For that, first let's create a patient ID. Okay, so that is, uh, maybe this is a table, so T, uh, tab, I'll, I'll do with the first table, okay? So let me, let me not do with this, so I'll clear the screen. Let me go with the, <coughs> uh, the first one, the tab. One, I want to add a new column to this with the name ID. Okay, this is how you add it. Tab dot ID. The dot is used to access the particular column. So whenever you say tab one dot gender, the you are accessing the second column, like that. Okay, so tab one dot ID is a new table. If it exists, it 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 indeed it it is going to use it. It should be used to point out that. 
but when it does not exist over there it will create all right so now it is you are creating a new column called id because id does not exist all right so i use a randomly i generate randomly i don't know any uh, specific number for the time being let's generate random so there is a function called rand i is a function that i'm going to use you have to tell what is the maximum value you want to generate right so that is maybe i'll write one uh, it's a 10000 so 1 e4 right you can write even 10000 doesn't matter okay 1 into 10 to the power 4 1 e4 is the shortest format right i'll uh, maybe uh, between 1 to 100 i create maybe then this is the size what is the size of matrix you want 100 rows one columns correct this is what is my expectation it creates a 100 into one matrix of random numbers ranging from 1 till 1, 10,000 and it has assigns to that table 1 and creates a new column called id so let's do this anyway i don't want to see the, all the 100 rows i'll show you the result now so what i do i create the uh, i'll show you the tab 1 once again uh, first to 5 because if the first 5 shows you this it means you see you have a new id previously the table 1 had only first 4 columns correct that means we created this with only 4 values now it actually created a new one called id and since you are randomly generating it is randomly giving the values as the last one right instead of creating random we can actually enter but you need to enter 100 values and then only you can assign so this is the quickest way i thought i can do it just to show you how to do this how to do the creation of a new uh, uh, tabular entry okay so first thing is create create an identifier so identifier in this case it is id right assign that to table one by using the dot representation tab one dot id and on the right hand side you create whatever values and you want to display you can display like this okay now let us go to one step one more uh, step ahead and i create let me assume that using one of the methods i have created a table table is there with me now instead of looking at the table and going through every column and every row of the table in detail i just want to see the summary of this table is it possible in matlab because sometimes we don't want all details i just want the summary of the table right so that is possible in matlab right and uh, what we can do is we can use a specific function called summary to look at the summary of any table so that's our next topic under this all right so we'll look at the next thing that is summary of a table all right so this is descriptive statistics of a given table so we use a function called summary Summary gives you a complete idea about what is present in the table, right? It is in terms of the data type. It will also tell you the details of what, uh, if there is some description about the table. And uh, it will also give you the details of uh, the various units and uh, any other description that is available, right? It will give you a complete detail. For example, let's use summary of tab 1 so you see it actually generates uh, it, it, it 
talks about every thing about that. So you see, whenever we uh, ask for a summary of that JV1, it says it is a, it has the following variables. First one is a gender. So variable names are the titles of each of the column of your table. Right. So gender, it is 100 into one cell of character vector. So each one is right. Each location is a character vector. Right. It is one column, 100 rows. Next, smoker is the second one. It is a logical array. Right. 100 into one. So out of which 34 true 66 false. You see, you get a detail. Right. So like that, you can see the height. Right? Whenever it's a numerical array, you get minimum, maximum, and median, something like an average. Right? Weight, yes. Uh, ID, also same thing. Okay? I can do this for any of the tables, so I can go for tab 2 as well. Just see, you get complete details. Right? Wherever you have text, it's not going to generate any details of that. Other than that, whenever you have numbers present over there, right, it will give you the details like minimum, maximum, median. So this is enough whenever I want to look at the statistical descriptions or something like that. Or what's the minimum, what's the maximum, what's the median. One range I'll come to know at that time. Okay, this is one. And uh, again, so I can look at the size of uh, a, given a given table. Uh, like uh, we see the size of any matrix, right? So that's what is my next uh, objective is uh, to find the size of a table right what do you do you use a function function used is size Okay, so we know, right, how the size works, right? You have to write size, normal bracket, and give the variable name. So, in this case, we are going to do the same thing. So, I'll simply write size of tab 1. I know that it is 100 into 5. Similarly, if you write tab uh, 2, 100 into 10. <coughs> so, Complete details related to a table can be found by using the size as well as by using the summary functions. Now, uh, we can create a new table, uh, but uh, I'm going to use uh, only certain parts of the original table. Possible? So, I know that, I, I mean, I'll clear. I know that if I use a tab one, so that tab 1 is 100 into 5. I don't want 100 into 5. I want certain part of that table and I want to put it into a new table. So I'll write T new is equal to, this is tab 1 of, I'll put what I require to this. 1 to 5, comma all the columns of tab 1, bring it into T new. T new is now only this. Okay, it has no, it, it's not going to have the 100 uh, patients detail, only the first five. <coughs> okay. So, what, what we have done now here is simply indexing. Right. So, we specified the rows and the row values to specify, okay, what are the row numbers to be indexed from the original table to create a new table. So, I see that. Now I created a new table whose size is 5 rows 5. Okay, so this is the first objective. We try to create, how to create a, how to, how to extract some data from a table. Okay, now my next objective is, let me create out of this particular, uh, what you call table, let me say I want to eliminate the gender from this particular one I want to erase right so how to do that anyway everything we have done in uh, in, the, in in case of uh, simple matrices you just say that I don't I you consider only two second column till the last column 
which means you are not considering the first column at all right so what i do t new is equal to in t new right consider all the rows but column should be 2 till n right pay notice and indicates the last one automatically matlab finds what is the end in that dimension for for example if it is column i am talking about it finds out the last column number as of now this is 5 it will convert that into a new tab uh, a new table right now it is it eliminated the gender from this and only smoker height weight and id remains because this was a number two three four five in that case so end keyword is always used to indicate the last variable of that particular dimension right so anyway we know that it has been used now all right now <coughs> let's try to access the data by row or column names right you can actually access the data in a table provided you know the row name or a table name let's assume right let's see let's see how to do that but before that i will write what i'm going to do right so Access table data by row or column names. Like the previous case, we try to access the row or column by specifying the numbers like first row to fifth row or second column till the last column like that it's we in we use the numbers previously but now you can try to access the uh, rows by using the row name or a column name column name is a variable name which is a vertically assigned values and uh, rows will have row names uh, let us see let's see how to uh, first Column names do exist. We know that columns have their, their own names and we are fine with that. But what is a row name? How, where is the row name in this particular table? It, it's actually, it does not exist. Okay, but you can create for sure. So I'll show you how to create this first. Let's go to the MATLAB window. And uh, first let's create the row names. All right. Uh, now, I know that in my uh, maybe table one, right? It is gender, smoker, height, weight, and ID. But I have a detail called last name, right? In my workspace, I can use the last names as the row names, but I have to specify. Okay, for the first user, the row name is last name of that user what is that it should be smith so row name is smith followed by the variable should be all this data like like whenever i say uh, access the particular patients with the row name smith it should be able to understand that i am asking the details of this first row and so on whenever i say the second name right like johnson it should access the second row details and so on so i should make sure that the machine understands that okay assign this row name for each of the patient data so what i can do here i can use the tab one in the tab one i have to specify i'm trying to assign the property p r o p e r t i e s it says that okay in the table one properties there is a that you can add a specific uh, feature called row names row names right you say that make the property as row names which variable the variable is uh, i think last name in the sense make uh, 
last names of every uh, patient as the row name for this particular table. All right, I do that. Uh, I think spelling mistake. Yeah, last name. Sorry, it it does that. All right. <coughs> now we see uh, what happens. We'll see. We'll see. I'll I'll try to uh, print the table now. Okay, so that is tab one. I'll print first few values just to see what exactly has happened here. One, two, five, comma, uh, odd. See, now this actually added the row wise names, right? Every row gets a name, right? And that name comes from the uh, variable called last name, which is present in our workspace. Okay, right. So, how to access this particular table with a row name now we can do this so let us just uh, uh, look at that now so if you want to read something from this you can use the following notation now it said actually a table but either instead of uh, mentioning about the number of row or number of the column or the column number row number you can simply specify the row names only I want to read for example Right, I will create a T new is equal to it is a tab one. Now tab one is actually you made you already made sure that you can access the table by using the row names or the column names. Since most recently we added the row names, I will show you how to read using the row names. So I'll write tab one of Specify the specific row names as a cell array of characters. So let me go for the first one. It says it is Smith. Okay. You read the row <coughs> with the name Smith. And I want to also want to read uh, maybe Johnson. I'll close this. Okay. And I this then this is this actually gives a specification of rows which you want to read in terms of uh, row names but I want to read all the columns fine just enter you see you created a new table T new and this is a two rows five column matrix or table okay again I can actually <coughs> access it in a different way I want to specify a single person's name right a specific row and specific columns of that I can do that so let me go with this I just want to read Smith okay and I don't want to uh, see if you are writing only one you don't have to use the flower bracket for this but now you see I don't want to read all the columns I want to read specific columns of uh, that particular patient right so for example Height, my first data I want to read, comma, <coughs> height, comma, weight, let's say so. All right. Now let's just press the enter. So it reads only one uh, row and specific two columns of that row. You can definitely read the details of both. All right. So I'll just make sure that both variables are met in a multiple way. So I want to read for Smith and Johnson, but both height and weight. See, two patients, only two details, right? Reading something specific from a table, right, is possible. Okay, now, as I told, I'll, I'll uh, tell you, a new concept of calculating something and adding it to a adding that to the table okay for example let's calculate the BMI body mass index all right so there is a standard formula I'm directly going to put it over here so that we can calculate so the tab one in the tab one I'm going to sorry in the tab one I'm going to add a uh, new uh, what you call column called BMI so previously I simply randomly generated a ID and uh, right I tried to add it to that matrix and 
that particular table and it works. Now I want to show you, if you have an equation, instead of calculating the equation and instead of putting that inside a loop for several times and running that, right, you can do it in a single step. I'll just show you that now. So BMI is equal to, in the sense for every uh, patient, I want to add a column called BMI. So tab one dot BMI is equal to, see there is a formula, I'll di directly write the formula. It is the weight of that patient into a constant. So in this case, it is a tab one. Tab one, go to tab one, look at the weight of a patient, right? And uh, multiply that with the, uh, this is a constant, 0 0.45, uh, uh, 0.4536, okay? <coughs> All right, this every number dot divided by, it's a element by element div division, okay? That's why it's a dot divided by. Then I have to use a T, uh, the ta table name, sorry, that's a tab, one dot, I have to use a height, okay, of that patient into another constant that is a 0 0.0254. <coughs> this denominator needs to be squared element by element. So dot power 2. So it goes to the table, look at the table's height, element by element, multiply it by this number, right? To that, look at the particular table's height, multiplied by this, raised to the power 2. It calculates this, and then it divides to the numerator. This is what gets added now. So anyway, I don't want to <coughs> show the complete uh, answer. But you can see on the top, the table just now got changed, right? It actually added a new column called BMI. So our idea was to use a equation and calculate certain value corresponding to every entry of the table and make a new column, right? Randomly you can generate, previously I showed you that, how I created ID, but now I wanted to calculate a specific value for the given data in a table, right, by using an equation. Any equation you want, you can use it in this fashion and you can make sure that you are going to add a new column to Table. The next topic that we are going to see uh, related to this is uh, how to manipulate the tabular data and add something more to uh, the, the table. All right, so we are going to add the blood pressure details to the table. Okay, so we can see that in the uh, details of the patients that is available for us here, I can see that uh, the systolic and the diastolic uh, blood pressures both are available. So we can actually add it uh, to the table. So at the end I'll uh, add them now. So tab one uh, dot, I'll add a uh, column by the name systolic. So equal to, it should be the workspace variable name, whatever I, if I write as equal to. So that is, uh, I can see there is a systolic over here, right? So I can simply write the same in here. So you can see that uh, a new column comes into the table now that column number seven will be updated, okay? <coughs> Similarly, I'll do this, tab one dot dot diastolic is equal to diastolic. So now as I expect, uh, what I expect is eighth column should be created with the heading diastolic and it should be like this. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to sort the uh, row. Is it possible to sort now, right? I want to sort it according to some parameter, right? Let, let's try to do that, okay? So that is, uh, sorry, uh, 
tab one is equal to uh, there is a function called the sort rows this is applicable whenever you are uh, dealing with the tabular data okay whenever you are de dealing with the tabular data and you want to sort rows according to a parameter you can use this function called sort rows so this is the format i have to mention uh, what is a table so that is tab one in this case comma specify what is a parameter according to you uh, want to right sort so as of now i want to go with say row names okay so i'll just close this and now if you look at the tab one which is on the top it's act it actually has been <coughs> written in the ascending order in the sense the row names have been considered and in the alphabetical order it, they have been uh, written so using this all the other way values will uh, will be the same but you are trying to increase this <coughs> now let us say i want to create i want to club uh, the systolic and diastolic these two I want to club into a single column right because they fall under a category called blood pressure right if I simply say systolic diastolic people may not understand what it is so if I mention above that somehow if I try to print that uh, it's a say blood pressure right possibly people understand okay that's the highest one this is the min minimum one right we don't have to know the uh, medical technical terms at all so what I do, I'll try to club them now. So in order to club, I'll try to make sure that I'll create a new variable that is tab one dot. I'll create a variable called uh, blood. Uh, maybe I. This is my variable. So this has to be equal to. You can club two columns into a single column by using square brackets. All right. So this is t dot. Systolic, <coughs> uh, not T. Sorry, the table name is I think uh, tab one. So tab one dot systolic and uh, tab one dot diastolic. Now we see the change that going to happen over there. So you actually. Have created uh, a new column called the blood pressure and now I can actually eliminate those two columns as well right so systolic and diastolic I simply want to eliminate I don't want them to be present in my this thing because I created a new uh, new column called blood pressure which contains the two variables right so I can do that now tab one dot systolic equal to just say null and now you see that will get eliminated from this also I will do the tab one dot diastolic also equal to simply do it so it gets erased <coughs> as you can see over there right uh, this is how you can club something uh, club a few columns into a single column this is also a very helpful feature. Now, uh, I can actually uh, move something, move the columns here and there, right? For example, let me say uh, I have this, but uh, see, ID is present at the fifth uh, position, fifth column. I want to rearrange the order, right? Uh, and uh, let me assume that I want to make sure that the fifth column which is id that comes to the first column okay fifth column becomes the first column then remaining one two four remains as it is and six and seven also as it is i don't want to change any other order but my major idea is that i want to bring this fifth column to the first column so how to do that right so what i can do here tab one is equal to in tab one 
right? Keep all rows as it is, no, no problem, right? But do the permutation. How do you do the permutation in case of a matrix? Tell which one to come where. So fifth one should come first, right? right? Followed by one till four, followed by six, followed by seven. So in a sense, you are talking about columns. Place the columns in this particular order. Okay, I close this. I, I don't want to print. Now you see, uh, as I press enter, my first one becomes, the, the sorry, this fifth one comes at the first. Then first becomes second, second becomes third, third, fourth, fourth becomes fifth, right? And fifth becomes one, sixth becomes fifth, right? And seventh will, uh, seventh. It's, it's like that, okay? You can see that. As soon as I end, enter, you see it changed, right? See, the ID came to the first one, then two, three, four, five, six and seven as it is. <coughs> okay, so this is how you perform various operations related to a table in a very basic fashion, right? There are straightforward commands to deal with this. Okay, now at the end, let's say that we had some uh, variables, we created a table, <laughs> And uh, in the table, we process the data like we created a, a BMI of every patient. And let's say now my work is done. I want to save this back, right? So in order to save a particular table into a file, right? Our the, we have to use a specific function. Okay, so this is called as a writing a table uh, into a specific. Uh, this thing maybe you, you you can write it into a text file or something right we can do that so let's see how to do this so this is right uh, table to a file right we use a function Write table. <coughs> so we will try to write this now using the write table function. We already have a uh, table with us. All I just, all I need to do is I have to call the function and I will write it. So now what I do is write table. You have to specify what is the table name. Tab one and then give a name to the file which you are going to write say maybe this is all all patients so maybe i can give the bmi so i give a bmi then give an extent extension whatever you want maybe i want to write a text file so dot txt all right and then i close this so now what i am expecting is i have to get a file in a current folder with the specified name when i press enter Okay, so let's just press enter. So I can see that there is a text file which is generated all patients. So I can open this outside MATLAB and uh, I can see that uh, it is written on over here. Okay, when you open it, you will see that there is a file <coughs> with all the details in the text format. Okay, even if I press enter, it should be entering inside the MATLAB window itself. You can see it's a text file. Okay. So first value is ID, then gender, then smoker, etc. Right? So all, everything. All the details that we can see. Like this. So that is how we write a particular table and we try to enter it into this. Now, uh, the next operation is uh, you, you want to perform add or delete table rows and uh, maybe you want to perform what is called as uh, the concatenation right so can we do that in matlab yes there are easier ways very easy way e using very easy uh, techniques we can uh, add the rows columns and uh, perform concatenation etc so here <coughs>
let's try to do the concatenation first. So concatenation can be performed in a very similar fashion like uh, how we do the concatenation of uh, various matrices. Okay, so let me create all, let me clear them first and create once again whatever I want. So first I load the patient's data. It will come to the workspace as, as we already have done. And uh, then I create the table, say t is equal to, uh, this is the first method. Just to recall, I'll do, uh, I'm doing this. Next, I'll do in a different fashion so that we can re recall both the methods of creation of table. So first one was uh, maybe I, I want to use last name as the first one. Then I want to use gender, then maybe age. height, then weight, then smoker, then systolic, diastolic. Alright, so we create a table, so table comes into place, that is T, right? And uh, <coughs> if I enter, say, size of this uh, T, it's actually 100 into 8, okay, by default, fine. Now I create another table, say T2, right? But uh, for this, I use a directly uh, the read table command, right? And uh, actually, we have another uh, uh, file in my system, which is actually, which actually contains few more, uh, a few more uh, uh, details of other patients which are not present in this so i have four more patient details saved over there so it's in the name more you know, more patients and it is a csv file <coughs> okay all right so now i read this so on the right hand side i can see the t2 coming into picture if you open that you get t2 right so now the t2 has four more uh, patient details with the same the same gender, age, height, weight, etc. Alright, now you see, since the number of columns and the variable names are same, you can concatenate. So what I do here is, I'll create a new table, say, t new is equal to its simple concatenation of one table, that is t, and below this t, I want to concatenate the t2, because the number of columns are same. Correct? So you see now, the T new is created, which is now, see, see, T has 100 rows, 8 columns, T2 has 4 rows and uh, 8 columns, now the T new has 104 and uh, 8 columns, correct? So, size of T2 is 4 and size of T new. So that's how you do the concatenation of tables. What what should be considered when you concatenate? The number of columns should remain same with the same names. Okay. Now how to add some rows, right? How do you want to add the rows? I want to add two more details, right? Right. I just have to be very sure that what I am supposed to enter. So if let let me assume that I want to add the details of two more patients. I'll go to this uh, T new, okay, and uh, in T new I'll see first should be name followed by gender. It should be in the same order. Whenever I enter something, I should enter all these values corresponding to <coughs> a patient. I'll keep that open. Now I'll first create a cell, okay. So this is maybe uh, it's I'll just give a name cell patients equal to I create a cell. That is, so enter a row first. Enter a row first, it's a name. So, Edwards is a name of the patient. Followed by, you see, you have to specify the gender now. So, I'll enter name. Right? 
followed by I have to specify what is the age, maybe 42. Then specify the height, maybe 70. Then I want to add 158 as a weight, followed by <coughs> 0 indicating non smoker, systolic and diastolic, so maybe 116 and uh, maybe 83. Fine, this is for the first. Uh, patient I want to add. So that then the second one you can enter by after entering the semicolon. So give a name, comma, uh, gender, male, comma, 28, 62, Five, then one, one twenty, seventy one. Okay, I have to close uh, this one and press enter. Okay, just imbalanced slightly. Okay, there is. You see now it is balanced. It created a cell area. Two rows, eight columns as expected. Now I need to add this cell array right to the table. Right? So let's do that. So how to do that? So give the table name T T mu is equal to uh, concatenate the already existing T mu. Below that, add the uh, cell array which you created with the name cell patient. Okay. Now the T new, we can observe that uh, it uh, not as of now we can see it is one not four. Right. Let me go to the last question. So it's one not four, uh, and then when I press this, it should become one not six. So you see, two more values are added. What we just entered. Okay, so that's how you add something to the table, right? Add two rows, right? Very specific, very similar way we can even remove the contents. Okay, so how to remove the contents? You make that as a null, right? For example, T new. T new is equal to. No, sorry, I have to specify which rows I should delete, right? So, bracket. You want to enter multiple rows to be deleted. So, let me say I want to delete row number 18, uh, maybe uh, space row number 20, and I want to delete row number 21, possible. Okay, this is example. All these rows, comma, corresponding to those rows, all columns, right? Make equal to null so actually now it is 106 i am deleting three rows so once i press enter i am expecting them to be becoming 103 okay i'll just do this see it was 106 now it is 103 the, the particular rows row number numbers row number wise they have been deleted 18 20 21 all right so that's how you delete the spe specific rows. Okay, now how to delete the rows identified by row name, right? I know that I can uh, uh, access the rows by row name, right? For example, let me say I want to delete <coughs> the row by row name row name is smith as of now you see it's not a row name row name has not been assigned how to do that we already have seen but anyway let me do that in this t new dot properties dot uh, row names right make them equal to t new in the t new i have last name right so go to this table 
find out the last name and make the last name itself as the table uh, row name right so let's do that so when i press enter you will observe that the last name becomes row name i think uh, okay there is a there is a duplicate uh, a row name over there let's try to if if there are uh, in this case if you have two names with the what you call repeated values then it might cause a what you call is it might it might uh, throw up an error okay because here it says that there is uh, there are two rows right with the same name let me try to find out and erase then i think i should be able to show you how to erase okay let me find out where is that word bed yeah 99 right so let us erase that uh, 99 first i'll simply erase that 99th one let's see what happens okay so this is wrong then i go to this oh one more wait edwards okay that is 101 <coughs> So it is the 101th row as well. Okay, now I think we are expecting this to work. Yes. Now you see the row name is assigned and the row name is the last name of that. Correct? So since we erased the two more uh, rows, we have uh, T new is just 101 now. Okay, it was earlier 103. Since we reduced it by two more, uh, this thing, it's 101. Okay. Right. So, okay. Now uh, we created a T, T new in such a way that the row, row, each row has a name for it, and the name is the last name of that particular uh, candidate. All right. Now, uh, how to erase a particular uh, row? Let me uh, let me say I want to erase the first row. Right. I can do that by looking at the row name itself. Okay. So before that, let me let me erase the one column which I don't want. So in the T new, make the last name as uh, null because I don't want that, right? Because it's already been assigned to <coughs> it. It's already been assigned to the row name, right? I don't want repetition, so I do this now. So in the T new. To specify the row name first row name is s m i t h smith all right smith comma all the columns just erase it right how to erase make it null so now you see the first row which we have highlighted so far gets erased right so the second row becomes the first row at the end <coughs> so that row has been erased and you have johnson coming to the first position okay all right then moving on so this is how you can delete a variable vertical column and as well as a horizontal column right now we can search for a row uh, rows or columns and we can delete them that's also possible in MATLAB. right for example uh, delete the rows of any patients under age 30 let's see because we see that there is an age column, right? I want to delete all those uh, rows, all the patient details whose age is less than 30. Again, this is a condition-based uh, uh, table operation. You can delete this. So let me uh, create a new variable called, say, to, to delete is equal to every t new dot uh, age that is less than 30. So just see that as soon as I enter a variable is created that is to delete. Right? So you see it's yes or no type. So whenever it is 1 it says 8th eight, eight, eight particular row in this matrix falls under this condition. Let's check that. 
So go to 8. It says age is 28. It is less than 30. So yes, you are going to delete this. And so on. You can see that every right number that actually satisfies this condition will get 1. Every other number which does not satisfy will get a 0. Okay. In the t new dot age, who is a, whoever value, whichever value is less than 30, right, that will be 1 in t delete. Otherwise, it will be 0. Right. So, now I'll do in the t new, right, wherever I find 1 in 2 delete, make it, a, you delete that. So, I'll simply write 2, 2 delete, comma, all the columns. In the sense, wherever 2t delete is 1, only that will be considered, okay? Those rows and all the columns of those rows make it equal to this, alright? So, I press enter. I, I got a table. I'll just look at a size now. So, size of t new. So, it's just 85. Alright, so it, it actually erased so many values from the table and uh, you are having the values lesser than the original value of present in the table. This is obvious because, right, uh, many of the values in the table got erased. Right, many rows are erased depending upon the condition that we mentioned. Okay, so that's how you delete certain rows in a table based on some conditions. So basics of uh, structures we could cover properly. Now we'll, we'll, re we'll re revisit uh, what you call as uh, the, uh, the tables later when we uh, go to the files. right? But as of now the fundamentals of tables are uh, what we already have uh, covered. Now we'll move on to a different structure, different uh, type that is called as a structure of arrays. This is also equally important. Structure arrays. From the basics of uh, Structures, we know that structures store data in specific locations called fields, right? So, which can then access by the names that we specify. So, we specify some names to the fields. Using the names, we can actually access, right? Let me just write what is a structure, right? Uh, structures are used to store the data in... Can call as a containers fields okay and uh, which can be accessed You give some names and you can access. So the standard method to access the fields of a structure is a dot notation, right? So we use the dot notation to to create access or to assign and to access right the structure fields 